Welcome to Lords of the Long Box, the Mikey Sutton birthday scoop jam. Lords of Long Box, alongside several YouTube channels such as Pete's Basement, Three Buck Theater, The Cosmic Wonder, Superhero Buzz, and others have been chosen to drop exclusive scoops from Sutton as his way of providing gifts to the community for the kindness he's received this past year from LA to Seattle, New York to the Netherlands, Kentucky to Costa Rica. This whole day will be pouring down scoops. Before the coronavirus shut down doors and discussions for the future of the MCU were already more active than ever. Though it hasn't been been uh, stopped, it's been done remotely. So let's get right to it, boys and girls, before we kick into it. Let's drop a little something that you guys are used to. What's good, YouTube nights? Welcome back. We thought you were live, but actually, this is pre recorded. I want to just give a big, huge birthday shout out to Mikey Sutton. Happy birthday, brother. I hope you're having a great day as this is going to drop on May 23rd, Mikey Sutton's birthday. So, we got a bunch of scoops. Uh, we may uh, post this as a premiere so all you guys can congregate in the live chat, but we're going to drop this pre recorded because there's a lot of stuff going on on Saturday. So, we're sharing this with all those other YouTube channels that we said this is the biggest scoop jam to date how do you guys feel about that this is wow major I'm, I'm, I'm happy a to be a part of it yeah Manimal, there's a lot of good stuff in here my cohorts of fellow lords of the long box here manimal say what's up what's going on everyone a lot of big scoops a lot of big stuff coming out this today you're gonna hear about should get and you excited for, and for his reaction the most laid back person ever dark side jedi <laughs> happy birthday mikey appreciate the scoops appreciate everybody watching as usual Wish Dare we I say we you. have more more scoops than Baskin Robbins all <laughs> days and maybe Carol Baskins. <laughs> no, <laughs> <they're good. laughs> all right, man. So let's get right to it, boys. Because we got a lot of stuff to get through. It's by far the biggest uh, scoop show we've ever had. Even back in the day, we were doing like four or five scoops. Let's get right to it, man. Well, let's kick in what you got for us. Okay. So Mikey Sutton has discovered the titles for two upcoming theatrical movies. These might change as it's incredible, er, incredibly early, but they are tentatively Nova, The Human Rocket, and The Uncanny X-Men. No screenwriters or directors are attached to these films yet, so everything is considered early development. Sources tell Sutton that Nova will not be an origin story in the sense that Richard Ryder will already be Nova in the beginning of the film and will be training with Sword and Nick Fury. Discussions have taken place on how Ryder will be different than the MCU's other youthful male superhero, Peter Parker. Ryder is going to be a stranger in a stranger, strange land, essentially an alien on Earth. 
He has lost his family due to Thanos and will need to adapt to life on another planet with superpowered new friends. It will be up to the creative team to take that theme and wrap it into an entertaining and uplifting package. So we've kind of been, and now you've kind of understand the last few weeks I've pulled some of the scoops haven't made sense. Like we dropped Nova Annihilation, which is going to be the second uh, right. Nova film. The first film is going to be this one. And we talked about how the, the seeds of the story have already been put in place by Endgame. When Thanos des destroyed Xandar, Zach and I have talked that nauseum about Nova Annihilation, how he becomes a sole survivor of the Nova Force and gets, what is he called? The world mind? He becomes like the basic world mind, yeah. Nova Prime. And he's, that in my in my opinion, I think Zach's opinion that is the best known ever. Shows oh, yeah. how par how powerful he is, and it is going to be Richard Ryder, not Sam Alexander. Tim, you were putting so, out that Nova Prime book way back, right. way back. You were talking about yeah, that book Nova as a, as Annihilation a number one mm -hmm. is the first appearance where, and it always reminded me of Kit from Knight Rider, right? Because right. you know how every time I'd read that book. Old mind was the voice of Kit in the back of my head. That's you know how you put people's <laughs> yep. names when you're reading something. That's yep. how I always pictured the world mind. And I do believe we have a long time spec for this, right? Yeah. So real quick, before we get into that, we kind of buried the lead here because we've been talking about Nova so much. But man, how about the title, The Uncanny X-Men? Like That's right. I'm sorry about an, that. For me being an X-Men guy, that makes me have hopes. Like It's like, finally, maybe it will be true to form, old school X-Men stuff, you know, Classic, classic X Men. When you bust out that name, that's what I think. Yeah, so, yeah that's that what they better. That's that, what they better do. Busting out that name. Yeah. That's Kevin Feige showing he's a true comic book fan. Was shocking that the uh, Fox folks never ever thought to say the Uncanny X Men. And we talked about this. The spec book was going to be what issue, Zach? The first time they were actually called the Uncanny X Men was what title? Hopefully, I didn't put you on the spot there. I got it right here. So it's going to be, as I look for it off the top of my head, issue 114. That's right, boys and girls. If you did not know, the first time they were called, you would think they've been called Uncanny X-Men this entire time. No, only on issue 114, the classic uh, Claremont and Byrne run. And 114, they started putting Uncanny X-Men on the title of the comic itself. So for those wow. out there speculating, that's a, some, just put it this way. People will collect anything on any little bit of news. I have a feeling that in Kenny X-Men 114, that's going to start picking up, man. So there you go, boys and girls. On to scoop number two. We're not even a third of the way there yet, boys and girls. Did you want right. to do Did you want to do the LTS? Oh, on yeah, that let's do that. Okay. This show is so packed, boys and girls. We also have two long-term spec lists, but because there's so much stuff on there, what we're going to do is just give you the quickie, the quick details of it, and then next week we're going to go break it down even further and give you like uh, what issues you should look out for and also some of the pricing. So uh, let's get right to it. What do we got for the long-term spec list? So real quick, we got obviously Richard Ryder, and we got a couple of his early villains in his original run. We have Condor. We've got Anaf Namat, which is actually the Sphinx. We've got Diamond Head, Factor X. Then we have some big names as well, some Fantastic Four characters like Blastar, Annihilus. We've got an X-Men villain in there, the Phalanx. And then we have our boy Darkhawk, another fun space-type right. character, so 90s era. And if it's going to be in a Nova, you know it's not the like uh, street-level version of right. Darkhawk. It's this the Raptor version. The Raptor version. If you don't know, they are pretty badass yeah. in the oh, comics yeah. when they kind of cosmic-sized up Darkhawk, so, and then he has these origins tied into... Uh, these cosmic uh, we beings. We talked about that, I believe. Uh, yeah. Before our first channel got taken down, we were talking about the different Dark Hawks and which book would be which. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah. So uh, next week, we're going to break down these long term spec lists uh, like we normally do. We're going to talk about what issues you should look oh, out yeah. for and, and what the sales data on is. We all know about Richard Ryder, but do you know what, what do you know about, you know, Condor and Factor X and Diamond Head? So uh, we, we will um, dig deep into it. I wish Otto was here to pronounce Anath Namat. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the name of that movie, The the, the Mummy, uh, the yeah. good one, with Brandon uh, Frazier. I really enjoy right. those films, by the way. Yeah. All right. On to scoop number two, boys and girls. Oh, I wonder what that's leading to. That kind of that kind of tells you everything you need to know mm. about it, but I'm going to read it for you right here. Rumors abound of Josh Whedon possibly directing the Fantastic 4. According to Sutton's insiders, they've have they haven't been any serious talks of that. 
Oh, excuse me. According to insiders, there haven't been any serious talks. Age of Ultron had left Whedon mentally and mostly drained, and the backslash, the backlash with DC's Justice League didn't help either. Sutton was told that another hugely budgeted superhero movie isn't what Whedon is currently looking for. Obviously, his mind could change at that moment, but it doesn't seem likely. But what does this though have to do with Disney Plus? Whedon is being considered to be a showrunner for two Disney Plus programs one of which is Excalibur, which will feature Kitty among its lead characters. And as for the other show, head over to Three Buck Theater to find out. So this ties into what we've been talking to you about Mikey Sutton, and we've been talking about Excalibur, and even before that, the Black Knight gave us a long-term spec list on Excalibur. So even though Josh Whedon has been attached to the Fantastic Four by numerous different sites and fans and what have you, it looks like, uh, they want him to work on Disney Plus. This is more in Josh Whedon's wheelhouse. If you think about uh, Buffy and the yeah. episodic episodes you used to do, ensemble Josh Whedon, cast. Exactly. He's ensemble cast is what he's about. Ensemble cast and the episodic storytelling, I think that's perfectly in Josh Whedon's wheelhouse. Do you remember how Age of Ultron just left him like just defeated? He didn't want to do anything, and he just kind of disappeared for a while. And yeah. then he got the fan backlash and fast forward all the way now. And now we have, I, I wonder if anybody's gotten Josh Whedon's reaction to the Snyder cut. Cause that's almost a slap in his face saying, Hey man, they called me in the last second to fix justice. League, and I did the best that I could. Now you guys still want to see the original, you know, uh, Snyder cut. So, all right. Neither here nor there. there you go. That scoop is um, Josh Whedon to direct a, a Disney plus Excalibur series, head over to three buck theater to find out the rest of this information. The next one, what do you got, Zach? Okay, this is a big one, man. This one I'm pretty excited for. So Ghost Rider may have been extinguished on Hulu, but Marvel Studios is not done with horror on the network. Kevin Feige is in charge now of their TV efforts and plans to proceed with the darker side of the MCU on Hulu. According to Sutton's Insiders, if Blade proves to be successful at the box office, is there any doubt? They want to then proceed with a, a Tomb of Dracula adult show on Hulu, adapted from the 70s Marvel comics. It will be a spinoff from Blade. Holy crap. Wow. wow! So many possibilities with that. <clears throat> so many. Holy and, uh, you know, we were talking about um, Jack Russell. Uh, yep. What's, what's, I, I'm blanking on the character's name. Werewolf by Night. Werewolf by yeah. Night. And we were talking about the mummy, all these characters man thing you could about. bring a ton of these guys in there midnight That's sun it. so yep. midnight Suns, originally yeah. uh jeff Loeb wanted to bring uh all the because marvel has a very rich history with the kind of not even supernatural we're straight up horror characters if you think about frankenstein dracula war by night and Loeb had this idea where remember it was going to be hell then Blade was originally going to, when we reported Blade was originally going to be for Hulu until Mahersha Ali said, hey, I'd like to play him in the MCU. Boom, they took that away from him. But Feige still wants to do these, and Hulu is the perfect platform. It may be a little bit too scary for the kiddies on Disney+, Plus, but it's perfect for Hulu. Because uh, I don't know if you guys have seen Hulu lately. It's got a lot better. There's a lot more stuff on it. It looks like they have another platform they could use for that. So if you notice all the FX stuff after it airs, you can see it like the day after on Hulu. Okay. Um, so all the shows and FX, so you can oh. see where they're this now. Too bad it's not on FX proper though, guys. I think FX proper, it could really get buck wild as they uh, normally do. Next up is a scoop that I'm pretty sure a lot of people have been waiting for because I've realized on this channel for a while now that anything Spider-Man related really gets fans excited. So I'm not going to tell you about it, but yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> all right, boys and girls, the next scoop is. This is a continuation from the Sutton birthday scoop jam from the Cosmic Wonder. Is it possible? It it's a possible and huge spoiler from a discussed live action Spider Man fight Spider Man. So avoid listening to this if you don't want to know. If the first live action film is produced, the plan is Tobey Maguire an Endgame farewell, a la Robert Downey Jr. A chance for a director, Sam Raven, to say goodbye to his beloved version of his character. But what happens after? According to Sutton sources, it's going to provide Sony and Marvel Studios a view Miles Morales from Diverse as Spider-Man. Wow. That's so huge. That is huge. So I hope now it makes sense to you guys that um, what we've been kind of doing over the last uh, 
I've been talking about Kirsten Dunst. They're bringing her back as Mary Jane. I wanted to tell you guys more, but basically it's because they're bringing back Toby Maguire or Sam Raimi. Is, and it's is their that, way of, is that five issue miniseries Spider-Man? Is that when Miles yes, goes into is. the 616? And we will talk about that as a great spec book. That is the first time that Miles Morales met the 616 Peter Parker. Um, it's a four or five issue uh, uh, miniseries called Spider-Man. And it's the first time Miles Morales ever met uh, Peter Parker. And I started buying that book two years ago because I said, eventually he's going to meet up in either the Sony or the MCU. So this is obviously Sony working with Disney. Sony is still doing their own things. I mean, recently you heard about Madam Web. You've heard about Jackpot, uh, Sony. It's just like, here's the best example I put. Fox continued to produce movies, even though they got bought. They had to continue doing business as usual. And that's why we ended up with the Dark Phoenix and the Mutant Mutants kind of stuck in limbo. Sony is continuing to do things, even though the rumors abound about eventually they're starting to sell off some properties left and right here. And remember when we said Disney really wants to buy Sony Columbia, not the Marvel characters, Spider-Man stuff is a bonus, but if you think about the streaming wars, they are ramping up with HBO Max basically having all the stuff from Paramount or and everything else. CBS got all the Paramount stuff. Uh, I'm sorry. NBC has or excuse me, has all the HBO stuff. And I think Universal. I'm sorry, but uh, basically they have a large library. Disney Plus is more con. I can't believe I just said that. But now with all these other players, imagine having Sony DreamWorks uh Sony Pictures Entertainment. So that means all the Sony animated films, all the Sony TV stuff in their Disney Plus library for streaming. They could take the R-rated oh. stuff, move it to Hulu. Yeah. So we'll see if that happens because Spider-Man is a pretty expensive franchise. So, I mean, Sony would have to give up a lot. Marvel would have to pay a lot or Disney, right. excuse me. It'd be very interesting though. So, all right. Next up is something we've kind of teased for a while. What is it, Zach? So this is a long one, so stick with me here. So since Netflix still has the rights to st their streaming defenders, Marvel Studios cannot touch those characters until those expire in the near future. But while they intend on bringing them back on either FX or Hulu, the defenders as a group might return with the different faces. Actually, their original faces. Discussions have begun on taking the defenders, the defenders, the original defenders, to the big screen. The Avengers will have its roster shaken up. Obviously, Captain America and Iron Man are gone, but plans currently are to transport Doctor Strange and the Hulk into a team of their own, a loose collective of individuals with freakish villains. Yes, brainstorming has started on Doctor Strange forming the Defenders with the Hulk, the Silver Surfer, and Namor. Now, Namor and Strange will be in the Illuminati as well, but that's not quite a team, just a secret group of individuals. The Defenders is. However, there's no structure, and they might not even call themselves the Defenders. However, there's no mistaking who is the leader and star of this group. This is Doctor Strange in the Marvel Spotlight. This is a big one, man. So that's, that's, that is, this I mean, is I'm, I'm sitting here listening to you talk about this, and I, my head is just, I'm trying to, whoa. This one well, almost, this is, this is a good one. This one, I feel like out of all the scoops we're given today, might be the hardest to pull off, but gosh, it would be awesome. I mean, it really does seem difficult, but if it, did come to fruition wow this Zowie. is the og defenders this is mm -hmm. that marvel fanfare book this is the bronze age goodies of the defenders that when we heard first heard they were doing defenders we immediately thought that but then they gave us the street of it because uh, there's been talk about them uh we also broke on this channel here a uh, disney plus bringing back iron fist uh since uh, Finn's, uh, so i won't say it since this is a family show but you guys can go look at the hashtag on fridays <laughs> there's Iron Fist is coming back. The only other th character I heard they may be bringing back is Jessica Jones. And there's also one other part to this. Go ahead and drop that uh, yeah. if you want. So a little caveat to this is we might have our boy Luke Cage showing up as well. Oh, sure. But it might be more a la the new Avengers, the team that came out um, you know, after Avengers disassembled. So Sweet Luke Cage will be added to the team, giving them a down-to-earth member with a strong moral and social conscience. No word yet if they plan to utilize Mike Coulter. So a lot of that stuff's still up in the air on those original Netflix characters or actors. You know I mean. what? I think Mike Coulter was a okay Luke Cage, but I always he I thought he was a little bit too old. He didn't seem to have, you know what I'm saying? He was yeah. like a big buff kind of stiff dude. I would love to see perhaps a younger 
had its moments, you know, sweet Christmas. And then uh, this one season where the crazy Haitian guy, who was pretty dope. With oh, the, he was the awesome. Record. Yeah. Who was that? What was his name anyway? Man, you had to ask anyway, him. Anyway, <laughs> I, I would say, you know, it, it goes Daredevil and then uh, Luke Cage for me, uh, you know, as far as ranking and then Jessica Jones. And, and well, I don't know. Jessica Jones and Iron Fist kind of a th- top. Iron Fist season two is okay. Uh, and you know what? I hate Jessica Jones, period. I don't like it. I don't like any Punisher of this. In there? Oh, Bush Punisher, Master. definitely. Daredevil. Bushmaster. Yeah. Bushmaster, man. It's right here. Don't you Bush be going to go get the hamburger. Booyakashan. All right, boys and girls. Right, we're getting the beach, boy. Yeah, we're almost getting a little off target here. <laughs> but uh, before we get to the last one, and we saved the biggest one for last, my man, the Manimal, is going to talk about another long term list that we will also go into this in depth next week and we're going to have one show dedicated to the long term and which comics to look out for as you normally so do one, but this one people are excited yeah this one we've talked about a little bit before here and there so we've talked about how there's going to be an agents of sword on disney plus so what we might see here is the character of quake coming over from agents of shield and also showing up on agents of sword um, so obviously Quake first appearance will be come back in there. Now here's a biggie, the Shi'ar Empire from the X-Men oh, universe, yes. which would be epic, epic. Speaking of X-Men, we're also looking at armor from the X-Men might show up. So there's this competition on who's going to be the first mutant in the MCU. And there's a lot of opportunities out there right now. Some other space characters, we've got Death's Head. We've got Abigail Brand, who's actually the head of S.W.O.R.D., Henry next, Gyrich. Uh, uh, error on my part on that graphic, but it should be Henry Gyrick. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry. So. And the brood, <laughs> which is a massive one as well. And then yeah. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, but it's a member of sword Kiel Rickett, whatever. Yeah. So, uh, the brood is the very, from like, very like the aliens from the movie aliens, oh, yeah. right. If about it, but they were also like, they were, a, they were a thorn on the X-Men side for a long time. And they're like, they were like the intergalactic uh, baddies for a while until right. like modern times. It was kind of the um, PG version of Alien because instead of it growing inside you and bursting out your chest, it just turns you into them. So remember you had like Rogue and Storm looking like aliens and having their powers as Brood, which was crazy. Yeah. So Quake has been in the news, at least uh, the actress who plays her, Chloe Bennett. Um, she's been asked ad nauseum, hey, where are you going to be in this sword series? Uh, and then she goes, I, uh, she goes, I haven't heard anything, only what I see on Twitter. And then there was something that just came out, I think, today or yesterday. It would have been yesterday because this will be airing on Saturday that Quake said, or, they, or Chloe Bennett said, I would love to play Quake if they would have me. Now, I asked Mikey about this, and obviously there's uh, uh, NDAs they have to sign, non disclosure agreements. So, you know, we can talk about it, but an actor can't straight up say, oh, yeah, Quake is coming. And, uh, you know, because they, Disney wants to announce it on their terms. They don't want an actor to leak it for them or rob if he's uh, having one of his days, but uh, that's neither here nor there. But Age of Shield, we've been talking about it. It's been teased some set photos about swords. So now we know Abigail Brand, so kind of the head of the sword division from what I'm reading about this from Mikey Sutton is telling me that Nick Fury will also be kind of heading up swords since Shield is pretty much defunct. Well, and actually, May 27th next week is the last season of Shield. So I'm actually kind of looking forward to that. It's there going away. Right. And don't forget, last time we saw. Uh, Nick Fury, he was in space with the scrolls, so he's already out there. Yep, and who knows who's a scroll now? But oh, oh boy, okay, last one, boys and girls. War? All right, boys and girls. Okay, now it's time for the big one. I've given you the appetizers, now it's time for the birthday cake. As previously previously mentioned by Mikey Sutton on the Lords of the Long Box months ago, Magneto is being held back by Kevin Feige because of the saturation by Fox. What is being brainstormed about Magneto is larger in scope than anything Fox ever attempted. His presence, as with Doctor Doom, will be gradually acknowledged with seeds. Currently, this is how they will bloom. Magneto will be the primary figure in Secret Wars a movie which has been discussed on this show before. Occupying that twilight zone between supervillain and misunderstood antihero, Magneto will be seen as a big bad initially, but in the Secret Wars, Magneto will be lead the charge against Doctor Doom, producing an epic fight between the two that will melt IMAX screens worldwide. 
Once the object of mistrust by the X-Men, Magneto wins over their hearts and minds in Secret Wars. How do you follow up Secret Wars? Magneto, with his fellow mutants now on his side, except for Professor X and Wolverine, interestingly, will set up AVX, Avengers vs. X-Men, which will be developed to follow Secret Wars. So AVX was a huge uh, Marvel um, crossover where the Avengers took on the X-Men. If I'm not mistaken, Zach, I believe the X-Men had the powers of the Phoenix Force. Am I, am I remembering that correctly? Initially, yeah, right? You had the Phoenix Five in the in the start. The Phoenix Five, yeah. And Cyclops did not F in that at, at all. Oh, we got a lot to pack there, and we'll try to do it more for you later in the week. But this is the biggie. This is when I was teasing you guys fight. Uh, projects for phase five, six, and seven because the end of phase six, which would be the next three phases, roughly around there will be Secret Wars, and that's going to be the next end game level event. Why? And so, in between that, you have certain films, then you have the Annihilation Wave right in the middle. We talked about what that with Annihilus, and then at the end of that, phase six is going to be Secret Wars. Phase seven will start doing the Avengers versus the X Men by that time. We'll have a full introduction of the X-Men characters and brand new set of new Avengers. So this is looking not a year down the road, folks. This is looking maybe 10 years down the road, but this is something to get excited with. Uh, trust me, Kevin Feige hasn't been sitting on his laurels during the shutdown uh, with the pandemic. This is he's just been. Uh, what is that? You ever seen that meme about Chuck Norris? Chuck Norris doesn't sleep. Chuck Norris doesn't sleep. He waits. <laughs> All right. I'll put us all back on camera now so we can say hello and goodbye to the fine folks. But thank you for joining us. This will drop on May 23rd. Happy day to Mikey Sutton. And if you haven't, make sure you sub up this channel. We're doing a 4,000 sub giveaway. Check out our videos from Tuesday of this week to see how you can uh, get some free subscriptions to coverprice.com. Also, some comics and some other goodies. Any last words, Manimal? No, that was a lot, man. So there's a lot to think about, a lot to look forward to. And one thing just to kind of caveat with all this you know, a lot of people out there giving scoops and getting scoops and stuff. All this stuff is chain can change, right? This is this is things are a, always a river here. Change. So exactly, you know, yeah. ain't nobody saying this is exactly how it's going to be, but this is kind of what the picture's looking like right now. So, you know, and it looks pretty good, man. A lot of options, and there was a lot of mystery after in game as to what was going to happen next, and things are looking good. Things are always subject to change, and we found that out real time when we found out Fox was being bought by Marvel, and then when Sony decided to divorce themselves from uh, from Disney. Uh, you remember that? Right. Mm -hmm. So things immediately started changing, and then guess what? They repaired their relationship, and then things went back to. So things are always subject to change because people I'll, are human. I'll do you another one too. Let's not forget Guardians of the Galaxy three. That was supposed to come out pretty recent or like next movie up. And because of all the James Gunn drama, that was real world stuff affecting that. So a lot of things. But now you got a James, now you got a James Gunn suicide squad movie. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. And now because of the Snyder cut, you may get an Ayers cut of suicide. Yeah, squad. No it's it's going to get ridiculous after a while, Ben. All right. Dr. Jenny, any last words? Happy birthday, Mike Sutton. We appreciate you. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you all for joining us again for, for, you know, what we can only say are, Super scoops, yep. super duper scoops from the source yes, supreme. We will see you guys on Tuesday for the cover price top 10. But the next time, boys and girls, keep digging in them long boxes. Peace, Peace everybody. Out.
know that the Lord is Know that the Lord is up there. Um, What's in the box? Like a spider!